Hello everybody, uh, Chris here from Localis and uh, we wanted to take a little bit of time and talk to you guys about the uh, amazing By the Glass program that we're going to be launching to go and then hopefully for uh, dine-in service um, if everything wills us to be able to do that. But we really wanted to do a video because we wanted you guys to kind of see and hear about what we're doing with our program. It's always been uh, obnoxious as a word you could say for it, lead large. And um, while it was so much fun, it just did not seem even close to feasible during a time like this. Uh, we had our normal margins built into the wine, and uh, we really wanted to take a step back and uh, talk about why we had such a ridiculously large wine list. Um, you're speaking to someone here who knows very little about wine. Um, I love wine. It's an incredible thing. The food by itself, uh, the story, the history that I learn as I'm studying wines. Um, but I know so little, so we never really claimed to be a super knowledgeable sommelier. Um, but what I've really kind of noticed and, uh, and turned into to reality for my life in wine is uh, some of my favorite vignerons um, from the old places making wine, especially Burgundy, talk about the pleasure of wine. It doesn't matter how much it costs, what vineyard it's from, how it was made, how much pleasure does that wine bring you when you drink it. And I've kind of uh, really taken hold of that philosophy and we really want to show you guys incredible wines that you normally would not find on a by the glass list, uh, that you might not even find at most restaurants. Um, some very hard to get wines, some very exclusive wines, um, just stuff that we thought is really cool. And we went through and we priced these glasses down to a point where we think that they are very accessible. Um, we don't make near as much money and uh, we're good with that because this isn't really about trying to charge huge money for these amazing wines. We really want you guys to experience the pleasure of drinking amazing wines. Um, we peppered in all sorts of things into our new list. Um, it's now available on Talk. You can go to our uh, profile and take a look at all the glasses available. Um, but we wanted to offer some stuff that's just amazing. And um, this is not all of the glasses by the glass. It still uh, sits at around 36, so it's still a big list. Um, but just a lot of fun. And we got new containers. Uh, we have these beautiful little glass jars. Um, and we're, uh, we're able to give a little bit better pour ability. The mason jars that we were using were a little tough to pour out of. Um, so we fixed that situation. Um, everything will be labeled beautifully. Uh, we're gonna have some really fun specials that we'll do with some really amazing wines. Um, we're also gonna be able to sell you guys glassware. Um, so if you get a really beautiful glass of burgundy or a couple glasses of burgundy, um, we're gonna be able to offer you guys a really good deal on some beautiful glassware to drink it out of the proper glassware. Because um, something I definitely found out is that they matter. Um, I used to be that same person that was like, give me a break, wine is wine, it doesn't matter what glass it is in. Um, but it really does. It doesn't change the wine, it changes how you perceive the wine. So with that being said, I just wanted to kind of go through and um, show you guys some of the cool wines that we love. Um, this is uh, Manicole, which is an area. Uh, it's more uh, a little bit northeast of Burgundy. And uh, this is Chardonnay um, but from the place of Bougie. Um, it is incredible wine. I found this wine a couple of years ago. We brought it onto the list. It's been on there ever since. And I just can't get rid of it because it's so inspiring as a Chardonnay, so different than what you're used to when you think of Burgundy or even California Chardonnays. Um, it's rich. Um, it has an amazing clarity to it. Uh, it's a little bit more northern, so you get a little bit cleaner notes. And uh, the making um, at uh, Cavu Bougaste is absolutely amazing. As we're pouring the 2016 right now. Very interesting white wine. And speaking of interesting white wines, um, Zin Ubrecht, uh, Olivier is, uh, I think, the ninth, or maybe even the 13th, I'm sorry if I don't know, right, generation winemaker in Alsace um, at Zin Ubrecht. Um, this is Zin, so this is kind of a blend they do of Chardonnay and Ajois from some very famous vineyards. Um, they can't really title this as anything more than the wine that it is because those uh, grapes are part of the noble grapes of Alsace. Um, but nonetheless, you're drinking some of the best vineyards. Um, the Ajois is such an interesting grape, and the Chardonnay plays in a completely different way with the soils uh, and the climate of Alsace. But this wine is so food friendly. And uh, the very first version that we had was 2012. Um, it completely blew me away. I brought it onto the very first by the glass list at Localis. And, um, We've had a couple vine uh, vintages that we didn't love as much. You know, it always happens when you're making wine the proper way, which is uh, specific to the area and to the vintage. Um, but nonetheless, 2016 is again an incredible year. Um, that's the year we're pouring on this. Um, incredible wine, um, great for food. Uh, served really, really awesome. 
with uh, some interesting foods. Uh, you can kind of go into the Thai style foods and some of the spicier foods, even though it has no sweetness to it. Um, you know, RS, you know, residual sugar sweetness, but it definitely has like this underlying tone of just amazing ability to grab hold of highly acidic and uh, slightly sweet dishes and do something special with it. Um, moving even further into the sweetness, um, this is Mexican Grunhaus. This is his Riesling Monopole. Um, so this is his very specific vineyard. Um, there's something about uh, Maximin's wines, very clear, there's a clarity to them that is just beautiful. And if you like um, German Rieslings, uh, especially from the Mosul, this wine to me uh, carries some of the exact characteristics that you're looking for when you're thinking about German Riesling. Um, it's an off dry Riesling, uh, not too sweet. And for the people that are like, ooh, I don't like Riesling, it's too sweet. Uh, there are bone dry Rieslings and there are also Rieslings that are off dry. When you have such high acidity um, from the, uh, once again, the climate, you know, very cold with the river running down the bottom there. Um, very, very, very steep uh, vineyards. Um, so you could have a lot of runoff, so you don't get too much water. They're not too vigorous, uh, meaning they grow for a very long time, giving you a very complex wine. And uh, they, I can't remember exactly how long they have been around, um, but it is an extremely long time. These guys have been doing it for a very long time. They're VDP certified, meaning they've been uh, kind of categorized as one of the better makers in Germany for wines. Um, this is a perfect wine for spicy Thai food, um, any of that kind of uh, Southeast Asian cuisine, um, as well as some fun pairings, you know, like crudos and stuff like that. Uh, we're actually pairing this right now on the menu with our uh, ceviche, which does have a little bit of spice to it. Um, but bright cilantro notes and the Saison potato chips uh, really do something special with the wine. So really fun wine. Um, not everything is, uh, you know, incredibly hard to get and all of this stuff, but when you find a great representation of a grape that a lot of people like, um, this is Pinot Grigio uh, by Sturm. Um, they are a completely organic and natural winemaker um, up in Fiuli, Italy. And uh, this is a clean, beautiful, crisp Pinot Grigio. It's got a little something more than uh, other Pinot Grigios that I've had before. So it has a little more weight, a little bit more characteristics. Uh, Pinot Grigio, known as a grape that doesn't have a lot of its own characteristics. It's kind of a mellow, uh, more laid back white wine, but very refreshing and clean. This just has a, something special and something interesting. And I really love this when I tasted it. Um, and it's super approachable price point. Um, so it's a great wine to have uh, on a day like today where it's hot, you know, and you just want something clean and crisp and beautiful, really fun wine. And then on the total opposite side of the spectrum, we'll finish off the whites with uh, the Tinsoise. This is Poulini Montrachet. Um, incredible uh, village level burgundy, meaning that all of the grapes have to come from Poulini Montrachet. Um, they're not uh, vineyard specific per se, but uh, they make some of the best wines in Burgundy to me. Um, super characteristic of the area. Um, they play everything perfectly. There's not too much oak, there's not too much mallow, there's not too much of anything. It's just really well balanced. Uh, when you taste this wine, it's special. And I know that we've had some, some very knowledgeable wine people in here that have not had this wine, and right away they just kind of go, wow, this is beautiful. Um, this is usually never seen on a by the glass list, and it's also very expensive. Um, but we were able to price it at a point where we think that you could try it, you know? And that's kind of this focus of this list is, you know, less money to us is one thing, um, but really getting wine in the glass for you that you've never had before is the most exciting thing for us. And if you've been to Localis and you sit at the counter and you've heard me talk about wine, um, it's more so about how much that wine does for the food, how it makes you feel when you drink it, how amazing it is, not so much the technical uh, diagnostic of the wine. And uh, this is just one of those wines that I'm like, just, just drink it, just try it, you know? And it's special and it's amazing and it's hard to get stuff too. So it was really cool. Um, we worked with one of our favorite wine reps to get this into our hands uh, for the Buy the Glass program. Super excited. Uh, next up, we'll get a, into a rosé. Um, if you've been to Localis uh, in the past four years, you have seen this wine possibly on multiple wine pairings. There's a reason for it. It's not because uh, Scott Caraccioli is such an amazing person, although he is an amazing person, um, but just an incredible vineyard, a Skull Vineyard, which is kind of his vineyard. And he makes uh, Pinot Noir, he makes Chardonnay, and then a Rosé of Pinot Noir. And his Rosé is probably one of my favorite Rosés that you can find in the States. Um, it's just absolutely stunning how they've extracted just enough from those Pinot grapes 
to give it body and character, but still have it be light and refreshing as a rosé should be. Um, this to me is the epitome of rosé in California, and uh, I just love supporting um, him and his company. I think they make exceptional wines. Um, uh, Springboard, the people that sell this to us, uh, have a wonderful catalog of wonderful small producers just like him that are doing a fantastic job making California wine. Um, so the Caraccioli Rosé, absolutely stunning. Um, next up, uh, still with Springboard, kind of, these guys are buddies in real life, so it's kind of funny to see their wines together. I didn't plan it like that, I promise. Um, but this is a Grenache from iBrand and Family, who is Ian Brand. Um, very notable winemaker, uh, winemaker of the year in, uh, in the SF Chronicle, I think two years ago now. We've done some dinners with him. His wines are so amazing, so balanced, so well made. You can tell he loves making wine because when people love what they do, I feel like their products are better. Um, this is his Grenache. Um, so this is from Monterey County. Um, it's the Brousseau Vineyard, 2016. Um, I love Grenache. I think it's a great food wine. Um, we've actually used this on some pairings before. It's just absolutely stunning with uh, light meat dishes, um, heavy fish dishes and stuff like that. And uh, Monterey County being quite a bit cooler, um, you get a different kind of Grenache than you're used to. Um, whereas in somewhere like Rhone, where uh, Rhone is grown in, or uh, Grenache is grown in a fairly warm climate, this is very cool. And uh, the, the durnial shift is very heavy. So the days are fairly warm and the nights are very cold. So you get that really long struggling process of growth, which leads way to wonderful wines. And uh, this is uh, one of his best wines. Uh, we have the Cap Franc from this same label on our tasting menu right now to go with uh, Churrasco with a beautiful sofrito that's very green and forward. So like I said, his wine's made for food. Uh, this is sold out. You cannot get this anywhere else right now. So get a glass of it while it's still around. Now we'll get into uh, some French reds. I'll bring out a, a couple of these guys right now. Um, these are exciting because once again, um, it's not about how exclusive or how hard it is to get or how much money it's worth. It's about how exciting it is to be able to pour this in a glass for you guys and send it home. Uh, the first one here is Chateau de Bocastel. Uh, this is a Chateau Neuf de Pop producer. Um, this is their current vintage. And uh, I can tell you that Chateau Neuf de Pop can be a lot of different styles of wine. A lot of makers have their own stamp on what they do. It's always a blend for the most part. And Chateau de Bocastel has a, a secondary label called Colette de Bocastel that we had on the by the glass list for a very long time because the quality of the wine was absolutely stunning for the price that you got. So we were really excited to have that. And then when we decided to relaunch, we really wanted to give you guys an option to try one of these iconic Chateau Neuf de Pops. And uh, these guys make one of the most well-balanced, the alcohol and the fruit and everything in this wine plays so well so that nothing is out of place. Sometimes Chateau Neuf uh, being so warm can be really high alcohol. And for someone like me that likes lower alcohol wines, uh, some of them are kind of hard to get through unless you have a good meal with it. Um, this I think you can drink on its own, absolutely stunning fruit, um, just a pleasure to drink. So I hope that you guys can get a glass of this. Um, this is also limited when it runs out, it kind of is what it is, uh, but we just had to bring it on. Um, second one, we'll, we were kind of started in the southern part of the room. Now we'll head up to the very northern part of the room, the Cote Roti. Um, some very iconic producers up there uh, making Syrah. And um, to me, uh, Igigal um, makes what I think are the premier wines of that area. Um, this is the Cote Roti Village level. So once again, not from vineyard specific uh, sites, but just from Cote Roti. Uh, 2015, epic year for wines in France, um, really kind of all over the world, 2015 was a, a glorious vintage. Um, but 2015 in Cote Roti by a producer like Egal is just something that is magic. And um, when you think of those sanguial, feral, you know, all of the kind of characteristics that, that Syrah from the Northern Rhone has, this exhibits all of those in a perfect and beautiful way. Um, this is definitely something that you won't find at very many places. And uh, once again, not to throw that out there to, to say, ha ha ha, we have it, you don't, but more so to say like, we're willing to part ways with it by the glass so that you guys can try these amazing wines. This is insanely affordable, what we have it on by the glass. Um, by the way, all glasses, six ounces. Um, we're not gonna do half glasses right now because it just doesn't make sense uh, with the bottling and everything. But yeah, pouring out of Magnum too. So uh, Magnum's age extremely well, not that this has had you know, a lot of time to age, um, but they definitely um, have great longevity when they're put in bigger formats. And we're very excited to pour Gigal by the glass for you guys. 
Um, we're going to start getting over to some different uh, wines now uh, from parts of France. Um, this is uh, probably one of my favorite Beaujolais. Um, so Gamay Noir from Beaujolais, which is south of Burgundy. Um, Chateau Fivin, um, very old producer, 1877 was their first vintage. Um, this is Cote de Brut. So there's, uh, I think, 10 crews. I'm sure one of the wine people will tell me I'm wrong, but I think there's 10 crews. Um, Cote de Brut is one of my favorites, um, along with Moulet Vent, which is at the very northern tip of Beaujolais. I think these wines and this maker, and when you make the same grape for so long, I think that you really learn and, and start to cherish that grape in a way that people that make lots of grape varietals can't really understand. And uh, this is on our wine pairing right now too, which is why I brought it up. Uh, it plays beautifully with our dish. Um, it just has this ability to, or this is on the last uh, uh, menu, excuse me, with the uh, El Pastor pork. So it had a little bit of spice, bright notes, avocado, kind of not an easy dish for a red wine, um, being so green and having so much spice to it, um, with pineapple and all these other elements, and broccoli was on there too. Um, so it was a hard dish to pair, and we, we were tasting some different wines, and we thought maybe we would go with like a GSM blend or something like that. We didn't want to go Pinot Noir, that didn't make sense either. And then we started thinking about Beaujolais, and I pulled this wine, and uh, lo and behold, it just works so well because it does have those kind of green characteristics already. Uh, it has the ability to handle slightly bigger foods. And uh, this wine is just special. And um, it's brought in by Kermit Lynch. Uh, if you don't know him, he kind of really helped create the buzz and the, the pride of France, French wines in America. And uh, I, I just love his book. Um, he has so many amazing producers, and this is one of my favorite Beaujolais that we've ever had. So really excited to have that on the list. Next up, um, fun story. Uh, you've probably had this if you've been into Localis too. I've fallen in love with this wine. It's um, uh, Le Camp Grissard, and this is his Gevry Chambreton, um, Chant Franc. So he uses specific vineyard. And uh, this is a maker uh, that helps with this wine that is extremely famous and the story is really cool And I won't talk about it on here because I, I want to maintain some sort of uh, secrecy about this so that the prices don't go insane um, But there's a maker involved in this wine uh, that is absolutely famous and really wanted to have the opportunity To sell burgundy at a level that wasn't his own house uh, because those wines are insanely expensive and uh, one, one of my favorite uh, wine purveyors here uh, one of my favorite wine reps, excuse me, Tyler Stacy, uh, brought this wine to me and instantly I could tell that it was that maker. And uh, it's just a beautiful burgundy. It's something that you will not find um, and something that you have to try. If you, uh, if you love burgundy, red burgundy, um, you should try it. If you don't love red burgundy, you should try it because this might change your mind. It's that good. I'm super excited to be able to pour that by the glass. Of course, we uh, couldn't have a, a wine list without some beautiful Napa Cabernet on it. Um, I'm not the biggest Napa Cabernet drinker, but what I've found over the years is that I do fall in love with some of the makers in, in, uh, in Napa that are making wines that I think uh, are absolutely balanced and perfection with food. You can still drink on their own, and uh, I'm excited about where Napa's heading right now. There's some people with incredible minds doing incredible wines out of that area. And this is uh, Michael Keenan's wine. Um, he is a wonderful man. Uh, he's been into the restaurant a couple of times. Uh, do not ask him for his opinion if you don't want it, which I love in people, but I know some people uh, uh, don't like that. But his wines are so well made and uh, priced incredibly well for what you get. This is his, uh, just a straight Napa, uh, Napa Valley Cabernet from 2015. Uh, remember that that is a great vintage, especially for Napa. And. Uh, this is just quintessential Napa Valley Cabernet. It's everything that you want, um, nothing that you don't want out of it. Not too much oak, not too much fruit, not too much alcohol. Um, it's just a glorious Cabernet. And uh, it pairs not just with heavy dishes, but with some lighter dishes too. Um, his wines are incredible. And I want you to try this if you get an opportunity. And like I said, it's very approachable price point. Um, and it's just really fun wine. It's fantastic. If you ever get a chance to try uh, other Keenan wines, please do. He's up on Spring Mountain and he makes exceptional wines. Um, we'll get to these last two. Um, wanted to talk about these. Um, I have fallen in love with Italian wines. It was one of those things for me that was a late blooming love of mine because I think I'd had 
not great representations of a lot of Italian wines, and I thought maybe I didn't like them very much. Um, I was uh, introduced to some aged Barolo. Um, that kind of changed my mind. Um, there's markers in that wine for me. I'm, I'm a terrible taster, believe it or not, and uh, I don't do well in the tasting portions of tests when I take them. Um, I can taste wines and pair foods with them very easily, but I have a hell of a time uh, figuring out which wine is what. And uh, Nebbiolo, to me, from that area, has this dusty road characteristic that I always find in those wines. And uh, my wife and I, uh, Jessica, we uh, went to a lunch um, at Biba before it closed, and I was really excited to eat there before it closed. And uh, we sat there with this winemaker. Um, this is Giuseppe Cortese. And this is a Barbaresco, so it's from the Piedmonte area, and this is from um, a great vineyard. There's some very famous vineyards up there, um, Canubi being, of course, uh, the most well-known, but Rabaya is, to me, quintessential Piedmonte grapes. I think it's fantastic. There's a silkiness on these tannins that uh, is very inviting. Um, there's an incredible earthiness. Uh, he makes these wines to showcase that vineyard, and I love that. I love when people... Uh, understand and believe that every bit of wine is made in the vineyard first and then really what you try to do is stay the hell out of the wine's way as you're making it. Um, he lives and breathes that. He, we had a, another meeting that we had to go to that day but we were pained to leave. Just hearing him talk of 47 vintages of wine that he's made from those same grapes, um, the family that he came from, uh, the stories of his life and what happened during his life when he was uh, in Italy were just inspirational and incredible. And this wine, along with his Lasona, um, which is in the very far northern regions of the Piemonte, um, are just some of my favorite wines to drink. And we had to put you know, this Rabaya on the list uh, for you guys to get. I hope that you get a glass of this. Um, it's incredible and uh, something very special. Um, another area that we did not want to miss is Brunello de Montalcino. Um, this is a, a little DOCG that's inside of the Tuscan region, the Chianti Classico. And um, these wines are just more developed to me than a, a lot of Chiantis from the surrounding areas. Uh, there is a level of, of richness and uh, of smoothness that Brunellos have, uh, especially some with some age. This is uh, Bolliero, which is a, a wonderful producer. This is their 2013 Brunello del Montalcino. And um, I love this wine. I, I think it's, when you want a wine that's big and robust, but still easily drinkable, I reach for this bottle because it has so much going on and yet never gets in its own way. Um, I don't know if that makes sense to you, but to me, I love wines that give you every ounce of what they have without overdoing it. Uh, this is not a wine uh, that can't be drank on its own with incredible pleasure, uh, but also paired with some tremendous foods. So that being said, uh, thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, these, like I said, this is a good selection of the wines that we'll be serving by the glass. Um, hopefully we can retain the same list as we open up for Dine In. But in the meantime, uh, click on, uh, get a couple glasses for yourself. And uh, if you wanna get some glassware, talk to us about it. And we'd love to send you home with some. And uh, this new menu for Puerto Rico is starting right now. It's been fantastic. The kitchen smells unlike it's ever smelled before. Um, it was essential for us to travel because I needed inspiration and I needed something that I'd never done before and to learn. And I got every bit of that plus plus, um, you know, to put your minds at ease. We were tested on the way out. We also tested on the way in. We're still negative. Um, so no, no worry about uh, security of your health. Uh, we're always going to look out for you and for our employees here, and we can't wait to dine with you and uh, get you some beautiful wines again. So have a wonderful rest of your day, and uh, let's get you some wine.